Well, hello, friends, and thank you for joining me again on The Daily Connection. It's a time when we like to get into the Word. More importantly, we want the Word to get into us. So we're still looking at the theme of walking by the Spirit, especially as it relates to being aware of and attentive to false prophets. So yesterday, Jesus started us off in verse 15 by saying, Hey, beware of false prophets. They're going to come to you. Uh, they're going to dress the part. They're going to look the part. But they're actually ravenous wolves, raging wolves in sheep's clothing. Then he gives us this statement in verse 16. He says, "In the You'll recognize them by their fruit. Are, are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So he's giving them an example from their context that they would have completely understood. First of all, by saying, here's how you can identify them. Uh, you know, they're going to be deceptive. You know, they're going to sneak in, but eventually you'll be able to recognize them. And here's how. He says, you'll recognize them by their fruit, uh, which is fascinating that he says fruit uh, in singular instead of fruits. But in essence, that we don't need to get caught up in the semantics of that. We just more need to understand that fruit is always producing on the outside what is the reality on the inside. So basically what he's saying is what appears out here will eventually betray or present what is true of them within. And, and honestly, that application goes not just for false prophets, but it also goes for believers as well. We think about John 15. Jesus says, you, you, they will know you are my disciples by your fruit, by the, the life that you live. And so in this case, we can probably put fruit or we probably identify fruit in two ways. One would be the content of their teaching, um, and the other would be the, the, the character they demonstrate, um, what they do in their life. And, and again, in both cases, it, it, can, it can take some time. Uh, they can present a, a, a pretty convincing facade of, of teaching for a season, and, and they can present a very convincing facade of, of lifestyle for a season. That's the reason why that next part is important. <clears throat> Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Now, could you put uh, grapes, you know, kind of attach them to a thorn bush or, or force fig onto a thistle or something? Well, yeah, you could. But will that fruit thrive on that? Number one, that bush didn't produce that fruit. It's foreign to the bush. But number two, that fruit's not going to thrive with that particular bush because it's not connected to a life source. So therefore, eventually, that fruit will begin to shrivel and decay. That will be the indicator. That's why I was telling you earlier. Sometimes it, it just takes a while. It, it takes careful observation. It takes careful um, uh, sensitivity to the, the Spirit of God. Again, we're walking by the Spirit here. You know, I think about what John said. I think it's 1 John chapter 4 where he talks about test the spirits. <clears throat> that comes through careful um, scrutiny of, of, of the teaching, um, aligning that with the Word of God, making sure that what they're proclaiming through the Word of God, either in interpretation or in application, truly lines up with the teaching of the Word of God. Also, it means in careful observation of their life, watching, listening, observing uh, in multiple contexts. Because typically a false prophet can present a very strong, um, uh, very, can present very strong evidence within a crowd but, but maybe w when they're alone or, or maybe when they're with a smaller group, they're more comfortable, they might get relaxed. Then suddenly you begin to hear things. Uh, so then suddenly you begin to, to observe certain actions and attitudes. And then you're like, hold on a minute. Uh, that doesn't align with what I would understand a, a man of God to be or, or one representing uh, the Word of God to be. And, of course, one thing that can help us out here also it comes to us from Galatians chapter 6, excuse me, chapter 5. <clears throat> Starting in verse 16, Paul says, Walk by the Spirit, and you will certainly not carry out the desire of the flesh. For the, desire of the, fle for the flesh desires what is against the Spirit, the Spirit desires what is against the flesh. They're in opposition to one another. So there we see the, the principle presented that uh, this one claiming to be a prophet of God, claiming to speak the Word of God, is truly anointed by and filled with the Spirit of God, then they're going to desire the things of the Spirit. They're going to... They're going to be walking and submitted, submitted to the Spirit. They're not going to be carrying out the desires of the flesh, as Paul says here. And then Paul goes on in Galatians to say this. The works of the flesh are obvious. <clears throat> and again, don't let the word obvious throw you off of the subtlety of the false prophet. Because, yes, yeah, some of these things the false prophet is not going to demonstrate because that would be an obvious giveaway. But there are some things that, that maybe might show up subtly. Like, you know, sexual immorality, moral impurity, promiscuity, idolatry, sorcery, hatred. Yeah, those probably not so much. But 
What about strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness? I mean, think about those three. Jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambitions. Those can come across in a very subtle manner if you're not paying attention. And it takes time to recognize them, but those can be um, fruit that will reveal the true nature and the character of the false prophet. And of course, ultimately, the man of God, the one truly walking by the Spirit of God, is going to demonstrate love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Uh, and I'm following on that, of course, from Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. And so, although it's very subtle, and although it may take time, when we're paying attention to their teaching, when we're making sure that their teaching is consistent with the truth of the Word of God, uh, and that's going to show up in their interpretation and in their application. Because uh, in some cases, they'll read a verse, but then what they speak in terms of interpretation and application don't even relate to the truth brought out in that verse. They're going to avoid certain doctrines. Uh, doctrine of depravity, perhaps. Not, you know, not acknowledging that man is depraved. Man is, 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 falls under the curse. Uh, the doctrine of judgment, perhaps, that God is indeed has judged and ultimately will judge those who are outside of Christ. So those are some of the ideas that may be, may be avoided. Um, then character. Watching carefully and, and seeing if these characters, you know, the, 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 the fruit of the Spirit is showing up consistently over a period of time. But thanks be to God that Jesus said, although they're subtle, although they sneak in, eventually you will be able to identify them. And when you do, you need to take the steps appropriate to dealing with them, uh, whether that be going to the leaders in the church, whether that be going to the individual um, one-on-one or with another brother in Christ and confronting them in this, following those steps of Matthew uh, 18. But it needs to be confronted and it needs to be dealt with. But first of all, we need to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit in leading us to identify uh, what's going on? Is this person truly one of God, or is this a false prophet dressed in sheep's clothing? Well, I pray your day goes well. I pray that you, you're used mightily of God in the context where you find yourself, whether you're on voc vacation, whether you're still actively involved in your vocation, or whether you're participating in some sort of recreation. Make every, make every area a potential and a possibility to be used of God so that you know that when you leave today, you're sent out by God. You're living sent.